Hello everyone. I wish each one of you a very lovely, beautiful, successful, pleasant morning. Give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. One more time, give me six hours to chop down the tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. Abraham Lincoln, the great uh, uh, the 16th president of USA has given this beautiful line. So with this beautiful saying, I, Professor Sham K. Mishra, your moderator for today's session, would like to welcome you all in the induction program of our 22nd batch of PGDM. So before we get started, I would like to brief you about the flow of the session. The session will be of an hour and 15 minutes. As you all already know, where first 60 minutes will be the session by our guest and rest 15 minutes will be for question and answers. You can type your questions in the chat box and that will be addressed at the end of the session. Now I would like to introduce Ms. Dio Anemia, the Regional HR Manager at Gen Rooms, Jakarta, Indonesia. Ms. Dio is officially an HR practitioner working across regions in Southeast Asia. But more importantly, Ms. Dio is a self-driven individual who produces value and supports ideas of inclusive learning and leadership. Ms. Dio is experienced in human resource, learning and development, and project management. Ms. Dio enjoys meeting new people and learning new things to enrich her life experience. She has worked with Airfro Singapore as Operations Ninja Interns, AIESEC Indonesia as National Head of Talent Management, Asian Development Bank Jakarta, Indonesia as Project Coordinator, Gen Rooms Jakarta as Operation Associate, TCS Manila, Philippines as Leadership Development and Axel Jakarta as Human Resource Manager. Now, Ms. Dio is Regional HR Manager at Gen Rooms Jakarta, Indonesia. She is a persona and we are glad to welcome her today as our guest speaker. Over to you, Ms. Dio. Okay, hello everyone. Good morning. It was really nice um, to have everyone here. So in Jakarta now, it's around like 11.30. So it's lunchtime for me. Uh, but I really hope that even though it's morning there around 10 a.m., uh, you already have like a good spirit to start the day with me. Okay, so uh, before we start here, I would like to say thank you so much for the introduction. It was super complete. Uh, I'm not really sure how should I introduce myself next. But yeah, I would like to uh, start the presentations. Um, and probably uh, later on, if you people have any, um, you know, any things that you want to add or you want to ask, you can also put um, the questions on the chat box. So later we can uh, try to answer all of this. Okay. So yeah, now um, I would like to um, start the presentation for now. Um, so yeah, today uh, I will be uh, the guest lecturer for a session that may not be a hard skill session. It's more into, um, I can say it's more into like unleashing the potentials, which this is, I think this is like a very important thing to do because before we want to say that we want to do something or if we say that, oh, I would like to be this kind of person or this is the career that I want to do, it's really important for us to know who we really are. And I can say that before when I was still in a university, I was that kind of student who didn't really know what kind of thing that I like to do. I didn't even know what kind of career that I have because I just get by with life. Then I realized that I don't, I didn't really have a good self-awareness because when people ask me what kind of thing that I want to do, I was saying like, you know, I like to do um, anything but then I didn't have anything specifically. So we're gonna talk about it, how we can work on our self-awareness. And I know that uh, in, your current, in, in your current life, you're actually going to study. And I would like to give a bit of like informations, like how human resources are actually uh, looking for talents. We're not only looking for talents who are good in the soft skill or hard skill, but also on the self-awareness because that's very important. 
So we're going to go next to the next slide. Yes, this is my profile. I was the alumni of Universitas Indonesia. Uh, I was a bachelor of social sciences. I study movie and um, TV industry, actually. But I moved to HR uh, because I think this is something that I would love to do after I did several coaching. And now I'm currently the regional human resources manager uh, for a hospitality tech startup called Zen Rooms or Zen Hospitality Solutions uh, for Indonesia and Thailand. Uh, I'm also having a side project um, circling in uh, youth empowerment called uh, Axel Indonesia. So we provide services and also events for youth uh, to, again, unleash their potential through self-awareness. And yeah. I think you may know about ISEC if you're, um, you know, if you are familiar. I was part of ISEC in Indonesia. I also work for Asian Development Bank um, and work for Tata. I think everyone of you know what is Tata Consultancy Services. Um, I was the Leadership Development, Diversity and Inclusion Associate um, in Asia Pacific. I was assigned in the uh, Philippines. And I can say I've been meeting a lot of like a great uh, colleague from TCS. Most of them are Indians and they're like very amazing. That's why uh, when Prof Sham actually connected with me, I'm saying like, you know what, let's do it. Because I would love to meet all of you. Um, and who knows, later on you're going to work with me in Zen. So we don't know, right? So now I think we should start with talking about self-awareness. Um, I remember back then um, when I had my first um, HR work, I had a, I had a task to interview someone. I can say that the interview, I mean, the person looks great in the CV. Um, this person have a lot of things to do. This person uh, achieved a lot of things. But when I tried to ask them about, uh, to ask this person about, what do you think are your main qualities? Or what kind of thing that you would like to work on? What are you doing outside work? This person take a lot of time to answer. And then he's, he, this person not really sure what kind of like um, answer that you he would like to do. To, uh, to answer. So at that time, I realized why this person doesn't have the answer. I mean, you've been living in your life for years. Then we are, when I ask you about what are the things that you like to do, which is your interests, or like what kind of thing that you're good at, which is your skill, this person cannot answer it. Then I realized that, oh, probably this person only achieving many things, but this person take things for granted because that happened a lot. I used to be that kind of person. I tried to take this project. I, I tried to take this, that, this and that project. But at the end, I didn't know what kind of thing that I learned. So here I realized that I have a low self-awareness. So now we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about how self-awareness actually involving uh, us being aware about ourselves when it comes to the traits that we have, our belief, our behaviors, what is our motivation and also how we feel about something. And here, I would like to tell you, since I'm a communication student, um, I actually study about this, this theory. So in communication, we have this one theory called Johari window. It's about how we can identify a communication style. It's basically about communication. But then I realized we can actually use this um, to create um, how to call it, how to create more self-awareness on ourselves, which we can identify what kind of things that we have now and what kind of things that we have to work on. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to explain a bit about this quadrant. So as you see, there is this like window. We have like four, uh, we have like big one big main window and then we divide it into like four window. So as you can see here on the horizontal side, there are um, you know, they are like remarks, what I know about myself and what I don't know about myself. And on the vertical line, you have what others know about me and what others don't know about me. And if you try to connect the dots between the horizontal and vertical, you're going to get these four windows. The first window is open area. Open area meaning that there are certain traits, there are certain beliefs, there are certain values, skills, or qualities that I know I have, and other people know, and other people acknowledge that I have that. And that's good, meaning you know that, oh, this is the strength that I realize and other people realize as well, can create opportunity. 
And also there is a, probably a big, uh, a bad traits that you have that you realize you have and other people also realize you have. And it's also create an opportunity for you to grow and get help by other people. But it can be a bit scary if we don't realize that we also have three other quadrants or three other window, the blind spot, the facade, and the unknown. Okay, so what is blind spot? Blind spot is when other people realize that you have something, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Oh, I think Dio has this kind of good quality. Oh, Dio has this kind of bad trait. Other people know about it. But then you're not realizing it. I believe there were times, uh, I don't know whether it happens recently or probably in the past, like weeks, months, years, there is someone who tried to give you a critical, you know, a, a critic. And then you say, no, I'm not like that. What do you mean by that? And then, meaning, I can say that probably it's your blind spot because you don't realize that you have it, but other people see it. So what a person does not know about themselves, but others know, it's called blind spot. And that's very normal. Everyone will have it. And then the third one is facade. This can be a bit tricky. So facade is when you realize you have a potential or you have a bad trait or a bad behavior, but you don't really show it to people. So people may not know. So let's say if it's a bad trait or anything that is probably negative, it is very okay for us to just keep it ourselves first until we try to work it out. But it's going to be such a waste. If you have a good potential, then you don't really show it to other people. Because of what? I understand there may be some reasons why you don't tell people that you can do this and that. There must be a reason. But you, um, but I can say that it would be great if you could tell people about the potential. Because we don't know what kind of, of opportunity that you're going to have later on. I can give you an example. I really like, uh, so people know me. I think the open area that people have at that time is I'm an introvert. I, I'm kind of like shy. I don't really like to talk to new people, but I actually, I like sharing with people. That's a facade that I have. So people only know my open area that I'm shy. I'm an introvert. I don't really like talking in a big groups, but then deep down, I, un I understand and I know that I actually like sharing, even though it's in a small group. So I keep hiding my talents on, you know, like sharing, uh, I like to do sharing with some friends. Then I realized that I actually doing good on sharing things with other people to moderate uh, a discussion and all. But I know I don't really tell people about it. So they don't see that kind of potential that I have. Then one day, um, I, I, I think I'm ready to tell people that, hey, you know what? I would like to be, uh, you know, I would like to be a facilitator in a class. And they were a bit shocked at that time. My coworker, are you sure? Um, I mean, you know that you are a bit shy sometimes. Do you think that you can handle it? And I say, yes, I can handle it. I actually know how to do it. It's just that I never show you. So facade can take quite some time for us to unleash it. But I really hope that you will try to, you know, take the lead. Uh, I would like you to be brave on telling people that I have this kind of potentials. So facade can go to the open area at any time. Okay, and the last one is something that is very uh, unique, I can say. I think all of us watch uh, Frozen too. Um, you know, when Elsa, you know, the Queen of Vice uh, singing about going into the unknown is actually very scary. And then we can say, yes, I felt that too. I think all of us in our lifetime, we ever, we ever, um, you know, we ever, experience when we have to try things for the first time when we have to go out from our comfort zone probably when you have to take this university like to decide to study again or like oh i decide to study uh, to a higher level probably you will feel a bit anxious you feel a bit nervous because this is going to be like a whole new thing it's going to be like a new part of my life it's it's like going to the unknown so the unknown is when I don't know about myself and others don't know about me as well. So this is the part which we also have to work on. Things in life, learning in life is very infinite, I can say. There are times when I don't know that this thing exists and I probably will be good at doing this. So I think 
it's not only that we have to work on the blind spot or the facade, but also going to the unknown. Because they are part of the world, they are part of our life that we don't know yet. And of course, other people don't know yet as well. That's why it's very important for us. Not only, um, I can say that studying is really good. Uh, but if you can study other things or like if you can take some other places that is outside your major or probably you go uh, to take extracurricular activities such as volunteer, internship, uh, and etc. This will open a path for you to know other things that maybe you don't know yet for now. So this Johari window, actually a really good exercise, a really good, um, how, I can say that a really good theory in communications, but we can transfer it or we can transform it to how we also see our life in the current time. So what I'm saying here is after we study about it, we kind of like know about what is Johari window, try to draw a timeline of your life. I probably will say, let's not try to do it in 10 years before, but like in the past one year or in the past two years, or probably, yeah, two, three years will be fine. Let's try to do a backward planning, like a draw timeline, uh, the back timeline of your life, then try to analyze your Johari window. First, you can say what kind of things that I'm good at, what kind of things that I like to do, um, what kind of knowledge that I learned in the past two, three years. We, and then you try to know, do people know that I have that? Do people know about this and that? And then you try to define whether it's your open area or your facade. When it comes to blind spot, of course, you will not know what you don't, uh, what you're not good at, right? So this is the part when you need to talk to other people. You can talk with your friends. You can talk with your best friend, your family, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your teacher, your, your lecturer. Um, your career coach, your mentor, about what kind of thing that you realize I have, but I don't think I know about it. So you can talk to them about it and have an open mind because sometimes it's going to be like very hard for us to take, to take feedback. But then again, it's very necessary so we can build the self-awareness on ourselves. I am also like try to um, practice about it. You know, when I try to give like you know ask people about hey what do you think about me what do you think about my work and etc sometimes there are a lot of blind spots that they are addressing to me and it was i can say that it hurts at the first time like oh so it turns out they think that way oh it turns out i did not really a good job but then i realized now i know that i'm not good at it and what's the way forward so after you draw the timeline and you analyze this johari window you can also like pay attention to what bothers you about other people. It's like, a little, it can be like a life exercise because sometimes, you know, there is some people straight that makes us feel irritated, which I think that's probably the reason like why, um, you know, why you don't like certain work ethics, why you don't like certain work setting or like study setting, and then try to meditate your mind. I, it's not like you have to do like meditation like every day. Well, meditation every day is really good, but meditate on your mind is only about being mindful on doing all the things that you do. When you speak with people, when you try to do your work, try to be mindful. What am I doing? Do I like this? What kind of feelings that I have when I do this kind of thing? So these are the things that you can do. Ask for constructive feedback, learn new skill, read more books, listen to more podcasts, for me, as someone who don't like to read books, I listen to many podcasts or audiobooks because I try to understand other side of people's thought. I try to be mindful as well on what people are actually discussing about. So then I know, oh, I'm interested in this topic. I want, I would like to get to know more about it. Or I can say, I don't like this topic, but I'm still curious why this and that happened. And of course, do a micro travel and understand in this pandemic, we probably, you know, cannot travel that much. But micro travel can also about that you just go around your apartment complex or you can just go to the uh, park and then try to sit down and see and explore people. Because I can say self-awareness is something that we can do in any second of our life. But because we are having a lot of things, we have to juggle here and there. We have this hustle culture that makes us not realizing things and taking things for granted. And I tell you that having a self-awareness will be good. Why? Because this is the start 
to know what kind of person you are, what kind of person that you want to develop, and how you want to grow up. And grow up here is not only like from being a children to adult, but as an adult, you also grow every day. Okay, so here I would like to share as well about this one. Vulnerability. What is it? Why we talk about vulnerability in self-awareness? I'm telling you that remember about facade and also the unknown and also about the blind spot. Those are the three windows that probably kind of hard for us to explore. In blind spot, sometimes it's hard to take criticism. Sometimes we have like, uh, you know, a step back because, oh, I thought that we're good, but then you think that way about me. That can happen when you ask for feedback. In facade, sometimes you feel like I'm not ready yet because I remember back then uh, when I tried to show my potential, people are letting me down. People are saying I'm not good enough, but I know that I can do it. So like um, a trauma that you have when you try to show the true self. And then the unknown is more into like the fear of, you know, uh, the fear of failure. What if I try to do it and then I will fail? But here I can say self-awareness is also about being vulnerable. And I can say being vulnerable is not a weakness. When you, you know, when you have the thought of asking people a feedback, you're actually being vulnerable to yourself and to other people. And it's a sign of emotional intelligence because you understand that, okay, the feedback will not be wine and roses. The feedback probably will be pain and needles for me. So when you are ready to ask people, when you are ready to show your true self, it's the part of emotional intelligence. And this is the first gate for you to can uh, for you to have more self awareness, because of what we open up about what we lack, like, we where we doubt, where we struggle. Because human always meant to be in progress, and I can say in my age right now, um, I'm still twenty six. Um, I used to say, oh, I'm old, I'm already 26. But then uh, I realized, no, it's not like I'm already 26. I'm still 26. Because I know that as long as I still live, I am still in progress. Okay? So I really hope that it is very okay for us to be brave, to show who we really are. I understand uh, it sounds like easy to say, but if you want to have a peace within yourself is when you try to trust people because there are things that you can control and there are things that you cannot control what you can control is how you want to show yourself how you want to vulnerable how you want to be in progress but things that we cannot control is their feedback other people feedback other people criticism and again the thing that we can control is how we respond to those step back to those critics okay so don't put too much anxiety, don't put too much stress on the things that you cannot control. All you can do is, okay, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to show my true self. I want to have peace. I want to be more self-aware. So this is something that I can control. Okay, so now let's go. After we talk about self-awareness and then how we can analyze it, we're going to talk about assessing the competency because this is also the part of the lecture today. I'm not going to give you only like encouragement or empowerment on self-awareness, blah, 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 but also about how we can do something about it. After we know, uh, after we realize that self-awareness is important and we already define um, the windows that we have, now is talk about uh, let's talk about understanding your current set of competencies because now you're studying you're um, learning hard skill and soft skill but how we can actually be more self-aware on the things that we learn how we can be more self-aware on the things that we do in extracurricular activities or like oh uh, yeah in classes so here i would like to say if we say about competency it probably can have like a lot of meaning but for me competency have like three meanings it's basically about your values in life, your interests in life, and your skills in life. What matters to you, we call it value. What you enjoy doing, what it comes to interest, and what you are good at is your skill and ability. So here, I personally do this kind of like review of my competencies semesterly or annually um, because I used to be in a school which I have this like a, like a, you know, like a teacher, like a mentor teacher which uh, this um, 
these kind of teachers are actually asking us to do this kind of review. So I kind of like get used to it on reviewing what kind of things that I actually learned in the past one year, in the past uh, semester, and what kind of thing that I would like to explore here and there. So how do I do it is I'm doing this. There are like a five step that I do. And the first one is I need to list down what kind of thing that I learned or what I acquired during my academic life. Some people, I probably will tell you what happened in Indonesia. Uh, I met a lot of um, young students who just got into the university for like um, two semester or like fourth semester. And they say, you know what? I don't like my major. I don't learn anything. I feel like I choose a wrong major. And it happened a lot of times in Indonesia. It's because our educational system actually not really trying to help us on navigating our self-awareness. So when it comes to choosing the university, um, they have the tendency to just choose whatever it is available or whatever it is um, that they can get into the university. But then when they try to leave the major for like four or five years, they feel like a bit suffer. But here, I know I cannot say, I you know, when people are actually coming to me and ask about it, I'm not going to say, you know what, you can just change university. I won't say that. Because changing university can be a bit, you know, hard for some people in terms of the economically or probably on the time wise and all. So instead, I told this kind of people to do this. You know what? Even though you say that you don't really enjoy your major, you actually learn something from the things that you do during academic life. Say value. I believe that all of you will get assignment. And when you can do it on time, meaning that you have the value of accountability. When you do like group assignment and you make sure that everyone is involving in the team, meaning that you have the value in teamwork, okay? When you don't cheat on your uh, paper, when you don't uh, you know, do plagiarism, it's about the honesty. And when there are a lot of things going on in life, but you still manage to do your uh, study well, is about resiliency as well. And this is something that somehow people are not realizing when they don't have good self-awareness because all they think is, I'm only stressed. I'm in distress, I'm stressful. But you forgot that there is like blessing in disguise which you actually learn about life values such as those things. And the value that I put here are my personal value when I was in my academic life up until now is about accountability, honesty, resiliency, etc. So try to analyze what kind of value that I learn when I do my day-to-day -day academic life. Okay, and the second one is interest. So I was studying uh, communications and I also take places in multicultural communications. Then I realized that, oh, wow, I just realized that I really like talking to people who are from different backgrounds, from different nationality. That's why I learn English. Um, I try to have some friends uh, outside my country because that's my interest that I gained during my academic life back then in junior high school and senior high school. So that's why um, I have some interest on multicultural experiences. I like writing as well. And even though I'm an introvert, I like meeting people actually. I like meeting new people and have a connection. Because I can say being introvert is very different with being shy. Um, and I realize about it because, you know, some of people on the internet saying that, oh, being introvert is being shy. But I can say no. Being introvert is I prefer to do things in a small group of people because that's how my energy will recharge. Um, and I realized about it when I tried to take some self-awareness class and try to understand what does it mean by being an introvert and all. Okay, and I realized this kind of thing during academic life. So I can say that, you know, your academic life is not such a waste. If you really, you know, um, try uh, if you really want to work on your self-awareness, when you really try to learn what kind of things that I got from here, you really have to do this. Like you really have to um, analyze your value, your interests, and the last one is the skills, okay? When it comes to skill, yes, you get hard skill because like for example, um, let's say if I study communication, probably I got the skill on how to communicate with people, how I see people from different uh, cultural language and all, the non-verbal, the verbal and all, okay. That's the thing that you study. 
but don't forget that you also have activities that may be um going to be used in your next life in your professional life such, such as communication research and analysis all the work will have all of those things problem solving remember when you try to do like some uh, group work again uh, there are like some cases that you have to solve together it's actually generating um, the skill of problem solving. So you know how to define it, how you frame the problems, how you ask the good questions, and how to seek solutions. And again, project management is actually, you. I can say you, you learn about uh, project management in academic life because you know how to do the planning on the group work, how to do this and that, how to complete the projects and all. So this is something that please don't take it for granted. And there are a lot of skills that you can actually get if you try to analyze it well. Um, this is like the example that I can give when it comes to how to list down the things that you acquire during academic life when it comes to value, interest, and skill. Okay. And now I think we can also uh, talk about the step two. So the step one is during the academic life. So it's when you're at the class when you're at the university but then you also have extracurricular life right like such as internship organization event committee project um any community experience try to do the analysis again the value the interest the skill do it again okay and i realized that actually i have the shared value when i was in the class and when i was in outside class like the accountability the honesty it's still there but for interest, I think I have like different things. Um, for interest, when it comes to extracurricular activity, I really like to do social social work. Yeah, more into like a community development and all. And that's actually gained my interest. And then I realized one thing as well. This is also important. The interest. After we note down the things that we have in terms of the skill, the interest, the value that we have, but try to reflect on the interest itself. Because as university students that will be, you know, I think like in the next like two, three, four, five years, you're going to be the leader of your company. You're going to be the leader of your business. You're going to be the leader um, in your country as well. And this is something that you should try to reflect on. What kind of things, what kind of interest that I would like to advocate? Okay, it sounds very big, but actually it can start from a small questions. How do you want to take roles to solve the problems in your country, in your community, in your in the world, if you can say? Do you want to bring the arts to more people? Do you want to help small medium enterprise to grow? Do you want to help students to navigate their college experience? That's my interest. And other questions that you can answer. If I ask my current CEO right now, how could you uh how how where where did you find uh the idea on creating zen rooms so he's just he's basically telling me like this you know what at that time all i do is traveling around uh southeast asia then i found that there are a lot of budget hotels that don't have an automatic system on handling the reservation and that's the question that i have in life why do they don't infest on that kind of software so that's that's like the questions that uh, he had like six years ago and that's why when he tried to you know answer the questions by doing the research by doing like some kind of like small project and here we go uh, we have like a com a software company uh for like six years running in the whole Saudi asia and it comes from an interest it's come from an, a questions that burning inside you because of what? The interest actually can guide you to explore more possibilities. What do you want to do next in life? After graduation, what I want to do? Okay, let's say I want to work in a consulting firm. And then I probably will ask you why. If you say, I don't know, I just want to, probably you don't have, um, you know, like big motivation. Or like you have the motivation, but you're still not sure if it's going to work or not. But if I ask you, why do you want to work in a consulting firm? Then you say, because I want to help more business to grow because I want to, uh, because I want to uh, 
grow myself to be resilient is probably the interest or the questions that you used to have like a lot in yourself. So this is the thing. After doing this first step and the second step, then you try to ask questions and it's probably your interest in life. For me as well, I'm working 40 hours per week as a HR practitioner, but I also have uh, questions, the burning questions that turn into interest. That is why college students are clueless about what they're gonna do next. As an HR who knows how to do, uh, as an HR who ran the recruitment process, I created a small startup. So um, it comes from a questions, then it turns into interest. So I really hope that you also have this kind of thing, okay? And I believe you're, you're in a business school, meaning that you're going to create a business, but then try to ask yourself, what kind of business that I want to do? What kind of problems that I would like to solve, okay? And then this is also good. Reflect upon your values. Um, when it comes to values, yes, we can say like accountability, honesty, family is like, you know, list of values, but also try to reflect on the values that uh, probably re influence your life or work in general. Okay, like for example, where do you want to live? What does it mean by that? What's the connection with values? So I'm telling you where when there is a questions about where do you want to live, the question is not only about which city or which country, but it's about, oh, I want to go out from my country because I want to experience multicultural experience, for example, or I want to live with my family. I want to live alone for now. It's actually going to be the part of the value because sometimes we have value of independency. We have value of trying new things, okay? And then next, how much do you value autonomy and collaborations? And there is no wrong or right on this. It's just a preference of you do you want to do you want to have a predictable schedule or you'll have a flexible working hour and for me i'm someone who really love predictable schedule so i know what i'm gonna do next in the other side what does your ideal type of workplace what shots of responsibility do you want to have um do you crave variety or stability at work because it's going to um affect on how you're going to make your business and it's going to affect how you want how you will enjoy your workplace okay so try to do this and the next one is step five making the summary and evaluate it once in a while i'm telling you when you're doing this let's say today in the next year in the next one year it's probably some of things can change because people as I'm telling you, people are always evolving. You're going to meet more people. You're going to learn more things, meaning the opinion of you about life and work will change as well. But as long as you're on track, as long as you are aware on the change that you have, as long as you're aware about what kind of growth that I have this year, it's you're on track, okay? Because later on uh, in, in job, place in the workplace uh, you will meet many people who have you know like who have this kind of like purposeful life and i believe the leaders in your company the leaders um that you're going to work with you are the people who have purposeful life because they start with having good self-awareness and i'm actually creating you a workspace um since i'm not going to show a video i'm not going to ask you to do much things this is going to be a homework that you're going to have but you don't have to submit it to me you can just have this workspace you can go to bit.ly slash self-awareness um exercise iaebm which there you can find this one so there are like two sheets that i put there the first one is when you have to analyze your chuhari window uh, and put the open area and the facade that you have and next you try to ask people about you to try to get the feedback and put the things that you found like what is the blind spot and also the unknown what kind of thing that i want to do next and the next uh the other sheets is about the things that you acquired so um, let's say if you're someone who don't like to write down on the notes, you can just use this one. You can copy it. Uh, you can copy it online uh, in, in Google Spreadsheet, or you can also download it offline and then have it as your, um, yeah, as your um, workspace. And again, problem um, you want to solve. And of course, the questions to answer. What are your preferences for now? You can just put it there, okay? So that, um, this one, um, I'm going to show you again the link. Yes. So this is the link. 
um, you can just copy it. I think I'm just going to copy it here as well, uh, just to help everyone to, um, you know, just click it later on. Everyone can get the access to uh, view the file. You can just copy it online or offline, all good. And I'm not going to delete it, okay? So let's say if you want to assess this tomorrow, next year, hopefully it's still there, okay? So you can just click it there and try to start analyzing it, okay? And now, yes, um, just go next. I'm here, just what look, I just would like to tell you. Um, let's say, what if I don't have friends? I don't want to, you know, I'm, I don't want to, be, I don't want to be vulnerable enough yet to people. Uh, so I don't want to ask my friends about the feedback. How do I know more about myself? So I'm telling you that you can actually use some tools to identify it just in case you don't have friends or you are too shy or you don't want to, I, I think like for now, you don't want to get criticism or like feedback from other people, then this is the thing that you can do. So these are like some types of like tests about personality, about competency, about your tendency in life, like MBTI, Strength Finder, Enneagram, MAPP, uh, this task, which um, you can just take it online, like for free. They have, I think they have like a lot of like free um, tests on, online there. But if you want to pay for it, it's fine as well. Because for me, every year I take Strength Finder in, yeah, I take Strength Finder um like I pay for it to know what are my top 30 strengths that I have right now. And I can say in the past year, I think the top five not really changed that much, uh, but uh, the other 25 are changing a lot due to many exposure that I have in life and also in the workplace. So you can try to use this. If you don't want to ask feedback from other people, you can try to find more about yourself by taking like an online free test uh, on the internet. And yeah, just to close this one, I would like to say thank you so much for everyone who come today. And just want to let you know that again, self-awareness involves being aware of different aspects of the self, including traits, belief, behavior, motivation, and feelings. So I really hope all of you here before taking the next step of your career, try to identify first what is your value, what is your um, skill, and also what is your interest. And yeah, for everyone who wants to connect with me, um, let's connect on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm very pretty much active there. So just put my name, Dio Anamia. Then yeah, I will for sure, um, you know, like accept the invitation connection. So yeah, thank you so much. So uh, Ms. Dio, thank you very much for this wonderful presentation. I guess my student will get uh, really their new content and there is a lot of learning that they have received mm. from you today. We have some questions. The student has asked some questions. So I would like to ask on behalf of students. So like there is one student named Diksha, Diksha Gaigwad. She's asking that, uh, ma'am, sometime being self-aware about our own shortcomings, can we make, uh, can make you take a step back? Uh, I'm repeating the question. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometime being self-aware about our own shortcoming and that can make you to take the step back how can overcome this problem it's a very nice question i actually already read that when i tried to uh, explain the deck so that's very normal i can say sometimes uh, people think when it comes to in progress it's only about taking a step forward but somehow, this is something that people forget uh, to, you know, this is something that people forget to remember that when it comes to be in progress, there is a, how to call it, like taking a rest moment. So when I was in TCS before, I joined this kind of leadership training. Uh, it was in Singapore and the lecturer, yeah, the lecturer is like uh, someone who's from India. And I forgot about like the, how to call it, like about the, terms I, I think it's like a very indian term but they say in life it's not only about progressing mm -hmm. forward but also about understanding that you have to take a rest or you take one step back but then you move forward two or three forward and i think that's where i realize sometimes in life i mean even like at my work at my university there are times when you know when i try to um tell people about you know myself or you know when i think that i'm gonna fail it's basically on my head only. 
because I think that when I fail, people will mock me. People won't be friends with me. When I make mistake, they're gonna, you know, like uh, do that to me. So sometimes um, there are like the two things that you can do. I can say that um, the way we try to uh, take a step back is because we have the fear in life. So for example, um, you have a, a shortcoming, like things, uh, things bad happen. You have two choices. The first one is you just take a step back and then um, not progressing at all because you have a fixed mindset that you cannot do that anymore or you, you, you are going to fail again and again. Or the second one is, okay, I fail. Then you just take a rest for a while. Try to navigate your mind. What is really happening? Why I fail? What kind of thing that I can do good? Then if you take more step forward, meaning that you have growth mindset, so i think it's like going to be like another session talking about the growth mindset but it's very normal that we have to take a step back and i'm telling you sometimes um you know like taking a step back is not always a bad thing sometimes we really have to take a step back take a rest and be more self-aware about what was happened what do i think can do good then you do it so yeah i can say i really hope that it's going to be answering you i know that it's going to be like very hard for us to you know uh, when we try, uh, when we already make progress, then we have to take a step back because there are like some failure, there are like some mistake happening. But at the end, it's about our mindset as well. How we can have a growth mindset to just take one step back, but then you move two or three step, uh, two or three forward. So that's how it works. That's so nice of you, ma'am. That's uh, uh, dear that you have uh, answered the question so well, and uh, I feel Diksha gets her answer. Now we have one more question from Harshit. So Harshit is asking that uh, if somebody is having the interest in some non-profitable field, which would not give him the money in future, so what the fellow will do in this case? Oh, that's very interesting. Okay, I can say this very interesting because I'm that kind of person before. I'm a, no, still I am. So here's the thing. Uh, for Shifani. Um, I can say that it is very okay right now in our university that probably we have an interest in, I can say, volunteer work, NGO, which probably not giving you a lot of money. I can say because I've been working uh, in a youth, global youth organization, the pay is kind of low, but then I kind of found something that probably cannot be bought by money. It's the connection. So let's say, let's say if you have the privilege to do this kind of work in your early years, it's going to be super good. Why? Because the connection, let's say if the non-profitable is like a volunteer or NGO, try to take uh, some steps on, uh, you know, like international one uh, or probably uh, in an NGO that have like a wide uh, connections uh, with other people. Because I'm telling you, after I go out from that NGO, all my job, even at TCS, I was referred by someone who worked with me when I was in the NGO. So this was my partner, someone from the TCS, and say, hey, you know what, Dio, I think you're going to be good for this one. So I'm telling you, it is very normal for us to probably have an interest to a non-profitable things, probably to uh, to uh, you know to a job or like to um, a field that probably not going to give you a lot of money or financial gain. But sometimes there are something else that cannot be bought by money, which is it's the actions, then I create more opportunities. But probably if if you don't have the privilege, um, I can say that it's not possible for you to have that. No, you still can do that, but probably not involving too much or like not giving like uh, some portion of your life for that one. So for now, you can focus on uh, getting financial gain first because of course you need to leave you need to pay the bills right i mean it's adulting but in another side you can do that on the weekends or you can do your interest after work that's what i do right now so i work in a uh, i full-time work as an hr in a startup company but in another side i built my own company on the weekends or after work do i get money from my side project from my uh the startup company that I created, not yet, because we're still searching for investor and all. So there are times when we have to sacrifice something, but at the end, if you want to work for it, there will be a way. So yeah, you can have those two choices. If you're comfortable, 
or like if you have the privilege then just go on with that right now since you're still young and try to make connection uh, as many connections as you can the second one if you don't have the privilege then yeah i think you just have to do it not a full-time thing but you can do it on the weekend or afterward so i hope that's answering yeah, yeah that's that's so great and uh, I, I also believe that we should focus on the knowledge that we are getting and yes. instead of focusing on the money so that's great uh, one of my student is asking that, uh, uh, that is there any chance for us to uh, come in the indonesia and work in your company oh yes of course yes of course so i'm telling you in zen rooms uh i'm, I'm actually very excited because if you want to i can say if you want to uh, experience working in a very diverse startups that don't really see um, nationalities I think you should try to check on Zen rooms or Zen hospitality solutions uh, we are like 120 people in total globally and we are from 14 nationalities and we also have a lot of Indians as well our VP marketing I think it's kind of the same because it's business school our VP marketing is uh, from oh uh, it's from i forgot the name it new delhi yeah he's, he's from new delhi our okay. senior content marketing is also from uh new delhi as well because they are apparently they are like cousins uh so they're actually like doing very great and yeah i think because i've been working in tcs uh in indian company so i can say i really like the work ethics of indian so um if you're interested um you can also like go to my linkedin we have like a lot of opportunity for international um you know talents as well because we don't really see uh nationality because yeah everyone is working remotely right now so we are very open if you want to know more about the company and also the role itself okay that's that's so great uh, we have one more question from nidhi nidhi jaswal She's asking that how can we self-aware self-assess our strengths and weaknesses and how can we work on our strength to make it the point to be a game changer? Oh, it's such a hard thing to answer, yeah, Nidhi? Okay, so, okay, okay. So, how we assess our strength and weakness? So, this is the thing that some people are actually cannot answer on the interview. Like a lot of people, when I say, oh, can you tell me about your strength? They're going to tell me about something that is not related to the qualities that they have. So how to assess our strength, it's basically coming from the value and the, the skill that you have, okay? And when it comes to skill, it's not only about the hard skill, right? So for example, coming from value. So you say that, you know what? When I do my work at school, I never late. I'm always on time. I always come to uh, the class a meeting five minutes, 10 minutes before then you know that you have this on-time value. It's a strength because not many people are actually on time. I'm telling you this, this is like the real life uh, experience that I got in the past years. The second one, let's say we talk about, okay, I feel like I always do good when I have to present to people, meaning that I have this an outgoing, uh, you know, outgoing um, traits that when I meet people, when I try to share to people, they like me easily. It's a strength because of what? In work, you're going to meet a lot of people, especially if you are in the front office, such as you're being a sales, being a BD, a marketing, uh, that will work probably closely with the clients. Then we have people who are outgoing because not many people are, know how to meet people for the first time. For me, it's going to be super awkward, uh, but I think for people who are very outgoing, um, they can do it very well. So that's a strength and weakness as well like that. But the thing is, uh, I'm telling you, um, if, you, if you're in an interview and they say, they ask about your weakness, this is something that you have, uh, this is the importance of self-awareness. Some people, again, always answer uh, weaknesses with something that is not tolerated to their work ethic. So try to find what kind of things that I lack of, what kind of thing that I have, this, uh, I'm not interested in. For me, People say, so this is something that the feedback that I always get in the past, I guess in the past years, and I'm still working on it is, I don't really show empathy to people because I'm too logic, they say. And I felt bad because I thought I already show like uh, compassion on doing things. I'm an HR, how could I not showing that? But then I realized when I got feedback from my employee, they say, yeah, sometimes when I try to uh you know consult my problems you don't really show empathy on your face 
but in my heart i show it and i realize that i have like kind of like um you know like a very poker face uh you know a poker face uh how do you call it like a poker face uh yeah a, a poker face when trying to solve the problem and people think i don't have the empathy because when we you know when we come in uh when we uh the meaning of the empathy is exactly how we show our care about to other people and that can be my weakness and i say yeah i probably can be a bit insensitive on people's situation but you cannot only say that you have to tell them what kind of things that you do to make it work or like to lessen the damage of your weakness then you can say okay because i feel uh, i understand that i can be a bit insensitive to people uh, this is something that i do i always seek feedback and every time there is someone because i can say that in live i do a lot of performance uh, performance review with my employees but if they are confident with their strength they know what they are good at and they are proud of it when they have the weakness i don't really see it as a weakness because they know that i need to work on it i understand but this is my strength i can try to overshadow my weakness to the strength so basically that's how it works so i really hope that uh, that explains as well yeah, Dio, you have answered it well, and I, I guess Nidhi gets the answer, what she's looking for. Now we have two appreciations. Uh, one is by Shivani Avasti. Shivani is saying, uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for making this self-awareness place for us, where we can explore ourselves and work on our shortcomings. She was saying, oh, she's saying thank you. And uh, Diksha is also saying thank you, ma'am, for uh, answering my question. I'm uh, very much glad for you and mm -hmm. even Nidhi is saying thank you so much ma'am for answering my question Harshit is also grateful that you answered her question uh, his question so I guess this is uh, now we are at the end of the session and uh, on behalf of IBM family I would say thank you very much Dio for giving your time and for sharing your expertise with the students sure. and, I, and I feel that a student have taken the message from you they have learned uh, some very important lessons from you that will help them in their future and we are expecting the same type of sessions from you in future as well surely <laughs> so with this saying i say so okay thank you thank you very much now thank are... you have a good day everyone and enjoy the next session okay good day bye bye